homeschooling is that you can configure um, the, the way you teach your children. Um, in the regular school, it's like one size fits all. No. Uh -huh. no. So here in homeschooling, actually, you can customize the configure based on the learning styles of your children, which is so great. Uh, like for our eldest son, um, he's a visual learner. So we also use the YouTube um, where he could um, grasp and learn better. And then um, we also expose them to like supply them with books without graphics so you can enhance their imagination. We also expose them to activities so um, you could enhance their <coughs> listening skills. So actually it's a homeschool and damning dynamics you can play around with. Uh, you are not limited to a certain curriculum. It's also a trial and error. Yeah. So you have that look having an imate is a luxury. You have that luxury. Sorry, just add. There's one fun thing that we like to do as a family. When we watch movies, I have them write an essay on what they've learned in the yes. movies. <laughs> the cinema. <laughs> the, that's English. So that's one thing they love to do because they know we're gonna watch a movie and then they're the ones who will actually write the the uh, what they've learned and what, what it was about and then they stick the ticket of the of the movie on that page. Yes. And to add with that, I remember when we go out of town, um, we are very intentional now. We just don't go for a trip. Now we uh, search for what's uh, the history of this uh, of this place, and then we do field trip report. Yeah. So it's really experiential. It's really um, it's a different kind of world. Of Aren't you depriving your children of something great by taking them out of the classroom without their classmates? How does it? How do they have a social life? Do, do your children have social life? Are they course. Or something? <laughs> right. So I want to ask that because these are people. Uh, these are questions people ask me. So I just want to ask you guys. Right. So do they have a social life? Uh, you are an example. Actually, you don't look shy. <laughs> Yeah, but Can you share a little bit about uh, the, the involvement uh, that your children are in, like where they serve or where, what they are a part of, any certain group or club? Okay, um, yeah. So actually, that's a really, that's a stigma about homeschooling. How about in the real world, how do they socialize? Diba? That's, ano, how do they learn how to communicate with other people? Pero ako kasi, when I look back, when I was younger, yung age ni Zia, ilan lang ba talaga kaibigan ko sa school? If I only have around five friends, if I, you don't get, well, everybody knows you because you are in the one classroom, but you really have, you only have five friends that you hang out with. And um, for me, kasi, when it comes to social skills, what I noticed about Zia, she is um, more, she is free to express herself regardless of whoever she's talking to, regardless if she's talking to someone her age or someone who's older than her. Because no one tells her to raise her head first before speaking. No one tells her to wait for your turn before you give your answer. That's why when you ask her a question, she a she answers with all her ability, with um, the best of what she knows about um, or of how she can contribute in order to answer a certain question. When she meets a person, just like what Mafi shared a while ago, na walang hi, walang ganun eh, walang walls. Di parang it's always an extended conversation. Oh, how are you? I ate donut earlier. Were you able to try that donut already from Chico or whatnot? Di ba? So, if she is not homeschooled, then I don't, I don't know if she will be able to develop that kind of social skill. And um, even before um, homeschooling Arzia, what really convinced me is that I met an 11-year-old homeschooled girl who, who has read a lot of really classic books, including Les Miserables, and not just read. She was able to cite the sum summary of that uh, book, and she was able to give her inputs as well. So I was like 11 years old, and she's that well-versed in understanding and communicating. I want to homeschool my child too. too. And um, also, when it comes to depriving them of what the world has to offer by not putting them in a classroom setup, I feel like it's not really depriving them of what the world has to offer. For me, um, home, the homeschool setup is really give, allowing them to enjoy the best that the world has to offer. The world and, is their classroom. The world is their classroom. In fact, um, just recently, around February, we went to Bangkok as a, as a family. That's the very first time 
we went out of the country as a, as a family. And if my daughter is not homeschooled, I don't think we will be able to do that easily. And when we went there, we got the chance to still continue homeschooling Zia and make her learn more about zoology. We brought her to Safari World and she saw real life giraffes. She saw real animals that are not, not, ev not all of those animals are present here in the Philippines. And also, um, yung, ako nung bata pa ako, sa libro ko lang nakikita yung mga yun eh. But my Zia was able to see those animals live, diba? Parang in, re in real life. So, I don't think we are depriving them of what the world has to offer. In fact, we are exposing them in an environment when, yeah, the world is their classroom. And not only that, we get to process the information correctly, what the world has to offer. And we, um, how do I say this? Kumbaga, um, we make the, we allow them to be exposed on what the world has to offer, but yet be there in order to in to help them process it, to form their values correctly. Yeah. Yes, um, it's not limiting them. For example, my eldest son, he likes animation. So we were able to send him to an animation school for a short course and his classmates were, the youngest was 19 and the rest were really old. And then they took Photoshop and all that. And he understood what the teacher was teaching them. and. One of the classmates said, so um, so they were like getting to know you uh, at the latter part of the session. And, and then they asked, oh, how old are you? And then he said, I'm 15. I'm, four, I'm 15. I don't know, 14 at that time. And he said, what? You're 14? What are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be in school? So, yeah, I am in school. I'm homeschooled. And then the guy said, you know what? You're lucky because um, you get to do and your parents get to expose you to what you really want to do. And um, at least my child get, uh, got affirmed that, you know, he's blessed. And um, that's true. You take out, you know, the, the learning goes beyond the books. When we go out for trips, it's not, they're more interested in, <laughs> they, they're more interested in going to the museums because what they've, what they've read in the books are now real out there. So when we go, wherever like if like outside of philippines or within the philippines like mom and i would ask him so which part of the region are we in like in the philippines which region are we in so they tell me so well, uh, in your in your civics book what what where is this in their book so they will tell me so you know a conversation becomes more interesting because they would say mom you know what this was you know when we went to Quran, like mom this was in the book we you know so it was really fun talk talking about it so if you're concerned about social life you're concerned about you know limiting them that's not true I think you get to expose them and give them more than what they can ask for. the luxury of homeschool especially HG they have a lot of activities they have a lot of clubs you know my son I think he was one of the first pioneer for the photography club now there's a music club now they have uh, the sports varsity um, team. So, I mean, they have different groups of, of friends. Uh, for me, I always tell my kids, because my family always moved a lot, so I had to move every two years. And so I had all different, different friends from different schools. 